Welcome back to episode 3 of the World Conquest speedrun where we're going to conquer all of Calradia as Frederick the Great. We had an amazing restart in the previous episode and we hope to extend that momentum. Our game plan is simple for year 2. Prison breaks, battle minor factions, get married, and make money. We start with some Batania actions since they are at war with Landia. The options aren't great, there are no faction or clan leaders here so we just pick one at random. We have enough swing speed to brute force through most enemies at this point so no need for defense. Then we flail about like an idiot for a few seconds along with this picked warrior. I usually prefer thrusting for prison breaks, but this sword isn't that great for it. To avoid our noble doing something stupid, we tell her to wait behind while we handle the rest. This is not our best moment for sure, and our noble is in the background just watching us getting double teamed. Thanks, lady. Yeah! Fortunately, we handled our business and move onward. We picked up plus 23 relations and 8 levels of roguery for this one. Since we are here, might as well do some crafting. We run into this beauty, 200,000 for a two-handed sword. We don't have the blade to hit the thrust damage, so we change plans and just jam whatever will give us the most XP and bam, 100k and 4 levels for failing hard. We need to start making our way back to Empire Lands, but we make one more final stop to see if we can break anyone out of prison, which we can, and a clan leader at that. We are slicing through everyone like butter. We complete the prison break for a huge gain. 27 relations, 11 charm, and 6 roguery. For level 75 roguery, we take the faster village recovery, which will be extremely useful once we start our own kingdom. We will be raided into the ground, so 20% recovery time is huge. Now it's time to put on our best cologne and comb our hair for once. Let's get ourselves a wife. Naraida isn't the best, but she's available, and she's only 18, so her level should be low, allowing us to level her up and build her exactly how we want. We are careful to pick the chat checks which are the highest percentage for the pass and have similar traits to ours. The ones highlighted in green giving us the edge. Our smooth talking earns us a second date which we hang around to do. The odds are much lower for the second go around so we have to take some extra risks and it pays off. We get the double pass check and earn the right to marry her. Now we just need to find her father Dysporian and negotiate the dowry. While on our way to meet with Dysporian we make a quick stop at Amitatis to see if there were any prisoners in need liberation. Faron of the Southern Empire was locked up there, who happens to be a clan leader. Huge XP for charm and roguery coming up. Things got a little dicey in one doorway when Faron decided to act like a chad with his tiny hammer and push the two guards into my hallway, making for easy overhead swings. We pick up 23 charm levels and 12 roguery. We get to the location where Dysporian was last spotted less than a day ago and, surprise, he's now two days travel away. While sulking in the Lord's Hall, we are approached by a goddess who goes by the name Sora. She's young, vibrant, and more importantly, she's available. She also has better steward stats than Narita, so we take a chance and go for broke. We have several traits in common making the chat checks a breeze. Most options are over 80%, nearly guaranteeing our success. But once again, the second date is the real challenge. We end up with a double plus chat check with a 65% success chance and nail it. So we are now engaged to two women. What could go wrong? We decide to keep Sora as our wife and hunt down her father Menteos to arrange the details. He asks for nearly 40,000 dinars for her hand, which we gladly accept because she is priceless. At least compared to Narita. Oof, we dodged a bullet there. We head back to pick up our new bride and make her the party quartermaster since she's level 163 steward with plenty of room to grow still. We are only a month away from from the end of the year two and we're behind schedule on our renowned game so we kick into high gear and search out minor factions to bully our first target the hand these guys are the worst in all of banner lord only marginally better than a mob of looters they have no cavalry and only five archers so we pick them apart and quickly overrun them Because we rushed our front line in quickly, we lost 11 troops, which is not a big deal, but still careless. Next time, we can let the archers do more work. 11 renown is a decent gain at least. Next up, we catch the lake rats out of position. They have minimal archers, so this time, we stay back further and force them to us. We need to minimize casualties because recruitment will be difficult without being a mercenary or a vassal. 
Once their line gets close, we give the charge command for both light and heavy cavalry, allowing an easy cleanup. Only 8 renown this time, but with no losses. Much improved. We spot a Gilman party alone and initiate the battle. These guys are much tougher with heavily armored cavalry in abundance. Fortunately, they're too scared to charge, allowing us to pick off their cavalry for free. We dispatch most of their cavalry, enraging their troops to charge into our archer line. They have enough archers to give us concern, so we charge our melee troops in order to preserve our archers. We will need all the archers we can get soon enough. Considering how big the melee fight was, we only lost 17 troops, so we are still in great shape. We pick up another 14 renown here, getting us ever so close to clan tier 4. At last, it's time to expand our influence on the region. We split off two companions to lead their own parties. We cannot call them into battle with us, but they will seek out bandits and earn renown for our clan tier. And since money is not a concern, we freely give them the troops we don't want to get them started. If you've played patch 1.6.4 for any length of time, you'll know that Sargo is the problem child. It has low prosperity and prone to rebellions. The time has come. We must forge our kingdom here. It's not the empire town we were hoping for, but when opportunity knocks, we must answer. We spend a couple days cleaning up their armies so that we only have to deal with the garrison in the city. We lose six troops and gain seven renown for the first battle, then another minor faction crosses our path so we swallow them whole. Two losses and six renown. We have two more rebel parties to disperse and then we can siege the town. With only 37 troops, the next party didn't have a chance. We lose zero and gain almost five renown. The final battle ends in much the same way, zero losses and seven renown. We are so close to clan tier four now. We begin the siege of Sargo. The enemy has constructed four ballista, which is not what we wanted to see. They outnumber us more than two to one, so we have to start the siege quickly. We build one onager to help knock some defenders off the wall. The plan of action, move all troops to the far right flank to give cover from the archers and ballista. Then creep up along the walls until we get good angles to return fire. We move our shield wall up in front Front to draw the attention of their archers and place our archers behind them in loose formation. The run up to the walls is always the worst part, losing troops without taking any of theirs with us. Now we are in a position to return fire and grind them down. This is a tough battle for sure, but we are starting to gain some traction finally. Let's move up our shield wall to get a better- well, we had a great plan and motivated troops, but a giant ballista bolt and 573 damage to the head can quickly turn that around. We retreat back to a friendly town to lick our wounds. We are a few days past the two year mark and unfortunately still short of clan tier four by 20 renown. It's heartbreaking, but only a minor setback. We've made great progress in other areas. We're halfway to becoming the tournament champion, which will give us plus one renown per day. For levels, we reached 23 for a main and made tons of progress towards all of the skills. The areas we are still lacking in is scouting, but with level 50 around the corner we should be picking up the pace rapidly. Sora went past level 200 stewardship, giving us lots of extra party size. Our bank account expanded to nearly 4 million dinars, which is exactly on track. I really wanted to hit clan tier 4 by the end of this episode, so I'm going to cheat a little bit and go for a few more days. Bonus time. Instead of picking on minor clans, let's fight one of the superpowers. We find a northern empire party roaming the woods nearby and quickly destroy them 
them with volleys of arrows. We lose only 4 troops to their 71 and gain 7 renown. Now at this point, you may be wondering why we attacked one of the big boys. They were at war with two other major powers and Lycaron was a recent conquest so the garrison was weak. An opportunity like this doesn't happen every day. We outnumbered the defenders and have better troops but we can't just march in as we would take too many losses and not be able to defend afterwards. So we spend some time building siege engines to take out their ballista and get accosted by two empire parties. They outnumber us but we have better quality. We tell our troops to follow us up the mountain which we plan on defending to the last man. We position our archers at the top of the hill with our shield wall off to the side, giving our archers a clear shot. Oh. The ridge of this hill is so steep that we have cover from their archers until they reach the very top, allowing us to pelt their cavalry without return fire. When they finally reach our line, we pour volley after volley into the ranks, causing many of them to flee. They charge with everything they have, so we must dismount and join our men. We personally take out Sanion, one of the enemy commanders, with a single blow to the head with Satan's Tooth. A worthy meal for our hungry blade. The battlefield is an absolute mess with bodies strewn all over the hill. We lose 13 troops but inflict 185 casualties in return, giving us 26 renown and more than enough for the next clan tier. We can't celebrate just yet though, the hardest part is still to come. We release both nobles after battle and continue the siege. With two Onager built, we commence the siege engine duel. Two minor faction parties show up on our northeast, but they are not being paid enough to risk battle with us. There are still two ballista that need to be destroyed before we can begin the assault, but if another party shows up, we will have no choice. With siege engine superiority achieved, we quickly dispatch our engineer to build a battering ram. On the horizon, ASOS shows up with 67 troops and we are forced to begin the battle. This time, we should have no issues gaining ranged supremacy without decimating our army. We pick our shots wisely, saving our health for the melee that is sure to come once the gate is breached. The enemy walls quiet down some as our ranged troops assert their dominance. While the ram beats the gate down, we provide covering fire. Even inside the gate, we provide covering fire from the murder hole above. Yeah. 
The battle is brutal and we are forced to retreat some. The enemy chases us out, but is badly overextended at this point and they are cut to pieces by our archers. The rest is trivial and we take our first town. Nearly 20% of our army has perished in the siege, but we have enough to mount a defense if need be. We will look closely in the next episode at stabilizing the town, but first we must address the angry parties outside. We race towards Asos and catch up with him, but we don't have time to fight. We sign an expensive peace deal and head back to our new home. In the next episode, we have a long list of things to do. Stabilize our new home, avoid a rebellion, continue to gather renown, and tournament wins, build up our garrison, start a new kingdom, and pick the right policies. The list goes on, but for now I ask that you kindly stab that like button before you leave. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.